This is Rodney Ham, your uh, fictitious candidate for governor, senator, or president, proposing arguments from the average American uh, with the extra ingredient of my bloodline, which goes back to the Donaldson-Jackson administrations from the Revolution all the way up to just before the Civil War and uh, beyond. Some of the questions that face us are not getting addressed by these politicians, and one of them is uh, the education in this country that happens after our wonderful teachers are done. And I know that's not popular because it falls on mom and dad. And I've got a few studies attached to support my argument because I once had a professor, and his name was Dr. Marty Arbiter at Wright State University, who taught me the significance of plagiarism and taught me about how to uh, cite my work in certain uh, areas, which I'm going to do now because that's how important it is to get our children off drugs, off alcohol, and back to the normal lane of life, of education, of enjoying the community, uh, having input in government, and providing us with a positive outlook for the future of America. Not something that's being uh, administrated through these young Republicans. Not something that's being administration or administrated through these young uh, Democrats. And as a person who is uh, known for his family's development uh, and inception of the Democratic Party, into our two-party government system that uh, blossomed from it, I wanted to be the first uh, to come out and ask some questions about why it is okay for us to start to neglect to educate children on other cultures' history. Uh, when I heard that, I thought that's just the media playing games with Governor DeSantis. Uh, but the more I watch and the more I listen, the more I seem to uh, feel like there is a push in this country uh, of a white supremacist type agenda uh, that would like to see these uh, books like the Diary of Anne Frank or uh, some of your uh, other cultures' histories uh, removed, uh, like Frederick Douglass, uh, so Thomas More, different uh, books that are out there uh, that may not be offered so that our children can't understand how to build a utopia that is aesthetic and appealing for all people, even the elderly. To do this, we have to get our children to focus on some things. And one of them is to focus on not being sick anymore. Um, we have created an environment now where we're offering stress-free zones. Uh, we're offering uh, optional bathrooms for people so that we don't have to hear uh, the, the stress calls uh, by not deciding whether you need to stand up or sit down to pee. Um, some of the answers that I would come up with would be cynical and cost-efficient because that's how my brain works. Uh, one bathroom, unisex, you can use it or you go home. And that's how I would look at it. And that's not being uh, insensitive. It's being logical because it's not our job as a business to provide you with a restroom. That is a courtesy. Um, in schools, uh, you, could, you could debate it a little bit, but you wouldn't debate it long with me. You either stand up to pee in a time-efficient manner or you do not. And if you don't feel comfortable, then take off out there in the woods and go pee somewhere. Uh, it's become ridiculous. And I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings, but sometimes feelings need to be hurt. Number two, uh, these children are so stressed out that they are getting marijuana cards, prescriptions for opiates, prescriptions to get off opiates, uh, and they are really bogging down our society unless you're in the business of being the prescribing doctor or the pharmacist. And we all know uh, about pharmacai. Uh, you can even find it in the Bible. 
but where we have to be careful of this onset of evil that chemicals can cause to our society, especially if you have addiction clinics uh, and people who study addiction working for some of these uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, because there's nothing more profitable than a repeater. So if we have children that are addicted uh, to things and can't function without them, then that pharmaceutical company is guaranteed that money until they die. Think about that for a minute. They're not working in the best interest of your uh, wellness and then going to turn around and lose your business. So someone has to monitor these things, and that someone's going to fall again on the parent. Everything's not the job of the administrators of society like teachers and policemen. Some of it actually falls back to the people responsible for the birth of the child. And it's their job to create them uh, or help to uh, teach them to be a productive, hardworking, tax-paying American who abides by the laws. What is the doctor's responsibility? Well, the doctor's responsibility is to tell the damn truth. If you ask me, that's one of the problems in this country right now, and it's a significant one. Because they're not telling us the whole truth about everything. Now, I've noticed around my community and other communities like it, uh, handwritten signs uh, for things like the uh, Suboxones, Vivitrols, and such. And maybe they do save lives. Maybe they don't save lives. I'm not going to sit here and debate it with you. But I think it should be ran through another set of eyes, like an insurance company. And I think somebody needs to hold accountable these doctors for prescribing it and these doctors and pharmacists uh, who are making money on it. And they need to say, what is the game plan for this? And if they come out and the opening doctor says, uh, we're going to do this for six months and they're cured, well, then by God, they better be cured in six months. I don't want to see them still on it 20 years later because that's just a hustle and we all know it. And all of a sudden, we have a built-in mechanism that says they're sick, so they can't work, and they can't do the things that they need to do, because in reality, they're still a drug addict. They're just on a different drug. What are the motivating factors uh, for these people to stop and become hardworking, tax-paying Americans again? Uh, the first one has to be money. So let's end their ability to make money with these drugs as they trade and swap for other drugs that make them feel different ways and all the stuff that goes along with it. By administering these, and it's already started to happen, but I think we need to see it happen in a much more broad sense uh, at the doctor's office. I know it's going to cost you more money to take these drugs. Well, it motivates you to get off of it. How bad do you need it? Bad enough to get up and go to work and earn your $50 so you can go back to the doctor again tomorrow and get it. Until finally it's over. But I think that with the hundred and something thousand dead people out here, most of them children, uh, that we have to stop expecting these drug addicts and uh, others to administer these medicines because they're too damn dangerous at a hundred thousand headstones a year. They're being swapped, misused, and abused to a point that we've never seen before in the United States of America. So we have to make some drastic changes. So from now on, if you've got to have the shot or you've got to have the pill put in your mouth or whatever, a doctor needs to supervise this happen, and it'll end all the pill swap and pill sales and pill trade. And folks, uh, that's about as blunt as I can get with it we got a serious opiate problem in this country. 75% uh, of all overdose deaths are from opiates, which are prescription pain pills. It has to come to an end. I think that doctors uh, and pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical people, pharmacists, are the ones that are liable. I think that they're expecting too much from these drug addicts. 
Uh, they're expecting them to go out here and not take $30 for their pill when they ain't got no food. I think that they're uh, asking them to be homeless when they could sell uh, half their prescription and get their rent. Um, and I think that we have to, as legislators in this country, uh, as media people in this country, as clergy in this country, as leadership in this country, and as parents in this country, start to demand inpatient administration of pharmaceuticals. Now, let's move on to marijuana for a minute. Marijuana is going to develop into an epidemic at the rates, just in Florida alone, 100,000 new marijuana users. I mean, 1,000% a, a more. Do we really want people sitting around like Shaggy off Scooby-Doo? getting high all day and playing Call of Duty because they don't have the motivating factor, they don't have the energy, they don't have the intellect to do much more. Do they really need to have this? Were, were, was this thousand percent just docile in our community before? Or is this some kind of outrageous effort uh, to promote marijuana and marijuana sales uh, by these doctors who have lost their integrity, if not their mind. Pot is bad for this country. We have got uh, a, a, a family locally uh, heavily involved in a couple of them, actually. Uh, and we've seen how uh, profitable it is and how they've been able to blossom uh, and transfer their good fortune from one lane to the next. And uh, good for them. But at what risk? When you start talking about marijuana, uh, you start talking about alcohol, and you start talking about opiates, there ain't a hell of a lot of good stories that follow. So, when you look at your bottom line or your profitability, factor in the cost of my children before you go making any more decisions. With that said, uh, I would like to see people get out here and make more of an effort uh, to make these alcohol companies and these pharmaceutical companies uh, put the game plan or something that is very similar to it on their packaging, on billboards, at football games, baseball games, basketball games, on their television commercials, and help push the spirit of St. Louis to hold Anheuser-Busch accountable for some good marketing for a change at the 2024 Olympics.